purpose of this video is to explain the action potential. What happens inside a neuron? So this is a neuron. With dendrite, right? The nucleus with all the organelles. This is the axon and the axon terminal here. So this is only dendrite. So on the dendrite will receive information that will be processed here along the axon. The result, the action potential will run through the axon in this direction, right? To the action terminal. If it ends in releasing a hormone or something, it will be released at the end. So what I'm trying to explain today is how that, that happens. How does it happen inside the neuron? If you look at the neuron, the inside of the neuron is negative and the outside is positive. First, we're gonna say what makes it negative inside and positive outside. Many reasons, one of the reasons are, one of the reasons is the proteins inside the neuron have negative charges around them, so it makes the cell negative. The second thing is the potassium is more permeable, can come out, out of the cell faster than sodium can come in. So when you have something positive, right, coming out more, and something positive coming in less, the net movement will be higher for sodium, potassium than sodium, that makes the inside of the cell dense. Now, because we're going to explain how that happens, let's talk about the, uh, the practical thing, things that happen around the cell in the first place. First, we have a high concentration of sodium outside, and just a low concentration of sodium inside. We'll talk about what makes the concentration of the sodium high outside, what makes it low inside. Also, we have a lot of potassium inside the cell and just few potassium outside. It means that the concentration of potassium is a high in the cell than outside. The concentration of the sodium is a high outside than inside. In that case, we have some channels called leak channels. Those are open channels all the time. They're, they don't have doors, they're just open all the time. If you have a leak channel, and it's open all the time. If the leak channel is a sodium leak channel, then sodium will move into the cell because it's high outside. If you have a leak channel for potassium, then naturally, because of the high concentration of potassium inside the cell and low concentration outside, naturally, potassium will move out because it's probably a concentration gradient because things will be moving from areas of high concentration to low concentration. That's the leak channel, it's always open. But we have a second type of channel called gated channel. Those channels are doors like that, but they have kind of closing. They have opening and they have door gates that close them. So we call them sodium gate cha or gated channel and then potassium gated channel. So they have a gate, they can close and open. Now these channels will not just open randomly. They will be opening based on something. So now, what is that something? That something can be mechanical it means that somebody got to put a force on it, mechanical, or it could be voltage. What does that mean? Now, voltage lighten channel, it means that in order for the channel to open, the gate to open, the electrical charge has to change. It is just like take a key. If you want to open the door, you have to put the key inside and open. Some keys are electrical. It means that if you make the charge positive or negative, you change it, the door will open. That is called voltage gated. But if it's a mechanical gated, it means you actually have to touch it. For example, if you touch your skin, you feel the pressure because somebody's put pressure. It opens the gate too. That makes you feel it. The feeling you have is a result of the opening of the gate. Because it's opening under pressure, it's called mechanical gated. Just like when you go to a gate, you can push it with the foot and open it, or you can put a card on it. So the card is just an electrical charge. But if you press it with your hand, it's gonna be what? Mechanical, something mechanical channel. Now these channels will all be open on those. Usually, and then we have a second, a third one, it's called chemical. Why? Because you actually have to put some kind of chemical, like acetylcholine at the door to open the door. Those kind of chemical gated channels, usually they're on the dendrite. 
where, for example, the presynaptic cell, like a cell here, will release something like acetylcholine to the dendrite, that acetylcholine will actually come to the door and open for sodium to come in. That's gonna be what chemical gate is, okay? It's opening based on the physical chemical property that makes it open. Now let's come back to the action for this neuron. Because the cell has, has a high concentration of sodium outside and low concentration of sodium inside, that happens also because we have something called sodium-potassium exchange pump. It's like a revolving door when you take it like this. What does it do? Using energy like ATP, it will push potassium and sodium and get their concentration greater. What does that mean? It means that this, we have a lot of sodium here, but this pump, right, sodium-potassium exchange pump, this pump will actually pump sodium out. Now, if you think about it, if you need to pump sodium out, then you have to have some kind of force, some kind of energy. That energy is used by ATP, pushing the, uh, the sodium potassium exchange pump to take sodium outside against its concentration grade. At the same time, the machine will pump two potassium in here, we have three sodium out, right? And two potassium in, also against its concentration grade because we have too much potassium inside, too little potassium outside. To push in, you have to push by force. So it doesn't want an active transport. Because on the leak here, the leak channel, they go with their concentration. It's a passive, you don't need energy. But here, it's an active, you need ATP, because it weighs against the concentration gradient. Now, when we talk about the action potential, we explained something, we said that the action potential will be propagating, running, from the action hillock, from the initial segment, right, to the action terminal. How does it happen? It is because you have a lot of graded potential, small stimuli that will just open a little door that will add up to become an action potential. During that action potential, the, what happens is you're gonna have a lot of stimulus that will come to open some sodium channel. Of course, if you open sodium channel because you have a lot of sodium outside, it will go in, right? So that sodium coming in will change the charges of the inside of the cell, the intracellular um, uh, concentration in negative will change it to positive. So the change from negative to positive is called what? Depolarization. Why? Depolarization. So you got the word D, right? It means it used to be polarized. What does polarized mean? It used to be negative outside and positive uh, negative inside and positive outside. So the fact that the sodium coming into the cell makes it positive, it remove the pole. It remove the polarization, make it depolarize. It will do that, continue moving in until the resting membrane potential that used to be negative 70 millivolt will change to positive, up to positive 30 millivolt. When it gets to positive 30 millivolt, because it's getting closer to the equilibrium potential of sodium, which is plus 66, meaning plus 66, all the gate sodium go will close. But it doesn't get there. It will be at 30, and the gate will close. If that gate closed, as soon as that gate closed, the potassium gate will open. Because we have a lot of potassium inside, naturally it will come out, right? So the potassium gate will open, so the potassium can come out of the cell. When potassium comes out, this plus 30 will go down again to plus 20 plus 10, zero, negative 10, up to negative 70. At negative 70 millivolt, when we reach the resting membrane potential, the potassium gate will start closing. As it closes, some potassium will still coming out, up to negative 90 millivolt. That negative 90 millivolt, the process from, from, uh, to, from going to, from um, the process going from negative 70 to negative 90, is called hyperpolarization because it, 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 it's even more polarized than it used to be at the beginning. So the whole idea is that the resting membrane potential negative 70 went from negative 70 to plus 30 to negative 90. This whole process is called what? An action potential. So the polarization, the repolarization, the depolarization, the repolarization, and the hyperpolarization. So it used to be polarized here because it has negative and positive here. But it was depolarizing, it got to zero, right? 
at zero, it's kind of neutral. Nothing positive, negative, got neutral. But you have so much sodium coming into the cell, it continues to be positive up to positive 30. But here, the sodium grid will close. Right? And what open? Potassium open. So when potassium open, of course, potassium will leak out. That will make the cell negative again. That's why it's called repolarization. It comes back to itself again. But it even goes down less than negative 70 to hyperpolarize. So this graph shows you the, the um, entrance of the sodium into the cell and the exiting of potassium out of the cell. That process is all called action potential. Let's see if I talk about all the uh, keywords here. We can come here now. So we know sodium in the sodium potassium exchange pump, right? Three sodium will be pumped out, two potassium will be pumped in. This we need energy. At the resting membrane potential, negative 70 millivolt, the cell is done, it's at rest. What is the difference between current and resistance? Current is just the movement of iron. And resistance is what is blocking them from going. Like somebody's talking you at the door, they resist, right? It's called resistance. Now, the equilibrium potential, we talked about it, we said, at what charges sodium and potassium do not move, like isotonic solution, right? So if you think of the sodium at plus 66 millivolt, reaches equilibrium. That means it cannot go in and out. It'll go to at the same level, actually, in, in and out. Potassium at negative 90 millivolt. It means at negative 90, the potassium channel will close. That's why it's not closing even at 70, because it's getting close to the equilibrium potential. Voltage gated means there's a voltage. The electrical charge will open the door. Ligand means something has to touch it to make it open. Right? So uh, the leak channels are always open, and the, so they're passive because they go with the concentration gradient, but the sodium potassium exchange pump is um, is active, right? It's active. And then the action healer is where the sodium, uh, where the action potential is found. All right, I think you got it. Thank you very much.